This video is gonna be an interesting experiment to see if we can put out a quick meme, basically. If we mess up one of these shots tomorrow, half the video is ruined. Before you watch this video, make sure that you've gone to the Corridor channel and checked out the world's bounciest pogo stick. This whole video that you're about to watch on this channel is spoilers for that video, so I, I recommend that you watch it first. The link's right below me in the description. Uh, it's the second link. Check it out and then click back and watch this video because it's going to make a whole heck of a lot more sense if you do. So Sam and I have been thinking of this corridor video idea. It's kind of a continuation of the world's blankediest blank series. The whole concept started as a joke between the two of us. A pogo stick kind of just got us laughing. Ren builds the world's bounciest pogo stick. He shows it off to his friends. Boing! He goes all the way up into the atmosphere and disappears. And when the camera pans down, we're in the same spot, but it's a hundred years later. Ren's bones fall and smash unceremoniously on the ground. I was there when the joke was originally murmured. I have a couple concerns. If it's not done correctly, it could very quickly become one of those things that's funny to us and us only. I mean, so the question becomes, can they make an inside joke an outside joke? The main thing is, we know we need two shots. He goes up and he comes down. We get a shot of Ren explaining he has a pogo stick and bouncing away into the sky. That's where we start defying expectations. We hold on the sky, he disappears, and as we slowly start panning back down, a title comes up that says 100 years later. We show a spaceship, then we pan down further, and we see a cityscape and a future bagman. What's a future bagman? Like, you would be the scavenger. So, final thing that happens right there, the sixth thing that happens is the bones and the pogo stick come back down out of outer space. And that's already a lot. It doesn't need any more than that. So, simple, focused, yet detailed execution. There's always this temptation, especially on the creative side, to want to add things because you want to show off how much you are capable of to the audience. But I think the key is really just boiling it down to what's next. Necessary. If that doesn't happen, this, this video is gonna fall completely apart. Now we're shooting tomorrow, and we only have a couple hours today to prep it. I've been kind of slaving away over this shot list here. Um, I can actually show you. I think it's complete. In the second shot of this video, and there's like in this trash hobo. He's like a scrounger. We gotta find a costume that suits that. We got a lot to work with here. I want this trash hobo to have that guttural flair. I think the layers will be crucial here, like layering different things on top of it. I love this. These uh, these rusty knee plates. These are great. Sewn leather. Oh, nice. What type of skin is that? Hobo skin. I think we're we're kind of assuming that they use pants in the future. I need another layer at this point. I feel like a vest. Yeah, that one's not bad. <sighs> You look like Shrek. <laughs> Get out of my swamp! Not the Shrek apocalypse. The Shrek apocalypse, man. Yeah, yeah I think it's the accessories that change it. Yeah, that's better. How does it look? I don't know. Ooh. I think you need one of these. Yeah. I think we're good. This looks pretty solid. Also, I don't know what you wrapped your <laughs> left leg in, but I like it. <laughs> that is unexpected. I love, I love the asymmetry. So now that Sam's approved this costume, we can make the pogo stick prop, and then I think we're good. I need some cool future lighting in here. Yeah. Of course you picked Shrek Green, dude. Of course, dude. I love Shrek Green. So here's our pogo stick. I think I can actually pogo stick. Are you any good at pogo sticks? I'm pretty good, man. Oh, you just want to show off. <laughs> no more screwing around, no more goofs. Yeah. We're making a pogo stick. What I'm doing to this is kit bashing it with random stuff that we have to make it look like it's a technological achievement. So this is gonna be the solar panel. The front half is silver, and the back half is this is for the moonlight, moon lunar panels. There's a button. This connects the capacitor upward thrust. You're, you're up there. I'm not <laughs> making this up as I go, we planned it. This is the new and improved world's most bounciest pogo stick. That'll do, donkey. Oh god. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> how this became a Shrek thing. Your whole life has been a Shrek thing, you just didn't know it. Ogres are like onions. Layering Ooh. these distractions. I need another layer. Layers! In honor of today's sponsor, Crunchyroll, I'm gonna be commuting home on my new pogo stick. That's right. If you guys don't know, Crunchyroll is the best place to catch anime outside of Japan. They've got all the new shows from all the new seasons that are coming out over there. And the best part is it's made and created by people who actually love anime for people who love anime. It's not just some janky streaming service 
like this pogo stick is, where it's created by some corporation to try to just make money on some content that they don't know what it's for. It's actually got all your favorite shows. My Hero Academia, Attack on Titan, uh, Dragon Ball Super, and the best part is, a lot of the shows come out only an hour after they air in Japan. Another cool thing, if you guys are already members and you already know about Crunchyroll, just know that some of the money that you pay for your membership goes to anime artists in Japan. So they really actually support the community there, which is another awesome thing that I wanted you guys to know about. Now please, if you guys already know about Crunchyroll and you already watch shows on it, leave a comment below about some of the shows that you watch because people who aren't into anime, who want to know, could definitely benefit by, by checking out those shows. So anyway, if you're interested, go to crunchyroll.com slash corridor crew and you'll get 14 day free trial just by signing up. Guess what's in here? Oh, what could it be? It's me. Can you imagine actually just holding a skeleton like this by the spine? Fatality. Very <laughs> good. We're chucking this off a bridge. If we mess up one of these shots tomorrow, then half the video is not complete. Do you like those steaks, dude? Because if we mess up one shot, half the video is ruined. Oh, hello. Ren, since you die in this video, does that mean this is the last of the world's biggest videos? No. People I die we all die at the end of the lightsaber video, too. Also, I technically die at the end of the slingshot video, too. I go to heaven. Is Ren the Kenny of Gordor? He is. Oh my god, they killed Kenny! We're gonna sneak into the LA River. Looks like there's a whole village that sprung up around it, so we might have to, like, bribe the city elder. Yo, so, like, what's the script? It's like, Ren comes in with the announcement. Guys, I built the world's bounciest pogo stick. Action. Oh, guys, check it out. I've done it this time. Stand back. I don't know how big the shockwave's gonna be. Two, one. Fatality. <laughs> oh my god! Ren! That thing is called the ball buster. <laughs> That's why they have stun men in movies. <laughs> yeah. Ha! What the? Ren! 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 I, I don't Red? need it all. It's disappeared. Our baby boy! Alright, cool. Thanks. The Mine pogo stick, when, when it falls, could either go like this and flip around and the skeleton will just kind of smack in. Or if it hits point first, it could bounce, potentially. And like, we don't know where it's gonna go. So you tied off. bones to a pogo stick before? It's like mafia shit. <laughs> <laughs> Next time you give us a bounce check, we're gonna make you bounce. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Good enough. Here's the pile. This is my swamp. Find something to test drop with. I am about to drop a rock. All right, it hit right there. I'm standing where it hit. It's really close. Son, that's a sketch. Whatever. No, 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 I'm doing it. If it hits the camera, so be it. Because like, here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. Every single time we think something's gonna hit the lens or hit the camera, most of the time, it doesn't. We'll get a new lens if we really have to. It will suck, obviously, and it'll be expensive, but the shots we get by being risky are always worth it. All right, you guys ready? Drop on your command. Ready in three, two, one. Dropping! Perfect. No, that was one, totally no, afraid. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was like almost perfect, dude. <laughs> He's off the arms are still there. Think you can still pogo? Uh, no. She doesn't pogo no more. Don't pogo no more. How was it? Brutal. It's How was it? It didn't bounce, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. A little too eager there, buddy. Pretty much landed exactly how I thought it was gonna land, just off to the side, but what I didn't anticipate was the skeleton to completely, like, dismember itself on impact. Just like, splash! That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Ren's so excited. Rip some of the bones. Goodbye, pogo stick. So we have two shots, and we have to merge them and make them one shot with a hidden transition. On top of that, we need to make an explosive pogo stick effect, and then we also need to make this lavish cityscape. This is a thick tutorial. So we have an iPhone shot, which is the first half of the video, and that goes all the way up until Ren explodes and flies into outer space. So I have Ren here, I have him painted out, 
then to just get our super cool giant explosion. I'm using a ton of action VFX elements here. I like these dust explosion elements a lot because there's a lot of power, there's a lot of junk and debris in them. And also a video co-pilot lens flare to cover it all up. So here's Ren's element here, just by itself. Boom, disappears. He's going to... <laughs> so basically, I take Ren's body and I turn it into a 3D layer and I just send that 3D layer up to the moon. But here's where the crucial part comes in, the transition. And this is kind of like the hardest part. I create a middle shot that matches with the iPhone in the beginning and matches with the thread at the end. And that way I don't need to get too specific with how these shots line up. Let me show you a little bit how I did that. I start by adding in a literal blue sky element that tracks up and down here. So as it pans up, it pans up to my own sky. This is Sam's sky. I basically have a hand animated 3D camera that generally matches the iPhone. So that way when I pan up, the uh, sky and the clouds and Ren all generally line up and are at the right speed. So the 3D camera is perfectly smooth, but I'm using one of my favorite, favorite plugins. It's the Red Giant Camera Shake. Now this thing is a 2D plugin. What this is doing is making it so that it still feels like we're on the iPhone. So I can have the realistic camera shake slow down and then perfectly become still again. We, we pan down, we bring the camera shake down, we bring some noise, color grading, vignettes up, and best of all, we bring up the big shot. To make the big shot, we have a pan down plate here. I did the actual pan right there while we were filming. I didn't leave that for After Effects. Sometimes when I do that in post, it looks kind of fake. And I used the Cinema 40 camera tracking tool. And from there, I built out this cityscape using a lot of the Kitpesh 3D packs. And they are awesome, they're highly detailed. We rendered this out with Cinema 40 and Octane Render. Nick, boom, spaceship, boom, city, boom, haze. All right, now let's put back in some action VFX elements. Let's start with dust at camera eight. Dust front 10. I did Mima's ashes sprinkling side 04. You need a little bit of grandfather's ashes at cam though. Yeah, for you. All these cool dust elements are pretty sweet, but I figured, hey, you know what? I wanna give this thing a little bit of extra spice. I've been inspired by a friend of ours. He posts a lot of really great stuff on his Instagram and YouTube channel. Ian Hubert is an awesome visual effects artist. He's got this thing called Lazy Tutorials. And in one of them, you can see a similar tutorial to what I'm about to show you. When a spaceship comes over, I don't want just a bunch of stock footage, smoke and dust coming. I wanna do something that he's part of the scene. I made some rectangles and put newsprint textures on them. Those were then run through a soft body simulation cloth simulation technically. So they are actually matching the scene. They're matching the lighting, they're matching the lens to show the scale of this spaceship basically. The Ren's skeleton was filmed as a second plate as well. This is all we're doing. We're just adding this element in and then I do a light mask on it as it collapses down to the ground. So that is the shot. It's a lot of stuff going on. This video honestly was a really, really fun experiment too. And building out a 3D city to use in a background. Definitely something I want to do a lot more of. So that's what went into making the world's bounciest pogo stick. If you enjoyed this type of video, you know, kind of the behind the scenes look at how we make productions here at Corridor, then you might want to check out the second playlist down in the description. It's chocked full of BTS videos and other educational filmmaking experiments that we've done. Who knows, you might just learn something. Thanks for watching. Dude. <laughs> Welcome to the pogo oh, wait, stick without rolling? moving your head challenge. Oh, I didn't know you were rolling. <laughs> you were rolling? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> wait, keep that up, keep that up. You can't move your head. Child, not <laughs> <laughs>